Hi and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Wendy and I make videos and tutorials about pottery. There are three main methods to hand boiling pottery, the first being the pinch pot. Start with a ball of clay, stick your thumb in the middle making sure not to go all the way through and pinch around to start creating the walls. This method is generally used for making rounded items, mugs, cups and bowls. Start pinching from the bottom and slowly make your way up. When you pinch, it makes the walls thinner, causing the clay to move outward and up. Naturally, the shape will want to flare outward, so make sure to start from the bottom and make your way up. When you're pinching, keep the thickness of the walls in mind. It needs to be even throughout and make sure you don't go too thin. I'll suggest staying around a half centimeter. I find using a movable surface such as a manual wheel or even a small piece of newspaper can be handy to help navigate around your piece. The way you position your hand when pinching ultimately affects the shape. If you angled your hand outward and pinch more with your internal finger, it will assist the clay to go wider. If you angle your hand inward and push more with your external finger, it will assist the clay to curve inward. Keep in mind whenever you pinch that clay needs to go somewhere. So stay in control of the shape. Try and manipulate the clay mindfully as you pinch. To shape the walls straight, use your hands as a reference and push the clay into them. If the shape is wider than you would like, you can always cut out triangles or darts along the wall and close the gaps, therefore taking away some clay and making them narrower. You can manipulate the shape as you please. In this example, I'm sharpening the one side to create a spout and adding a handle to the other, essentially making a jug. You can also always cut away parts that you don't like and even add more clay by using one of the other methods. I will link a few videos where I have used the pinch pop method for different projects in the top corner and in the description box below. Once you've made your piece, smooth the surface by using either a metal rib, your finger or a damp sponge. I'd suggest allowing your piece to dry slightly before doing this so that it is not as floppy while you try to smooth it out. The next method is the slab method. Before I start, I just wanted to quickly show you a fresh piece of clay. You can clearly see all of the air bubbles here. This is exactly the reason why you need to wedge the clay before using it. Wedging is essentially kneading the clay to get rid of those air bubbles. This ultimately makes it easier to work with and prevents some possible problems further on. Start by flattening the clay and slowly roll it into a slab. Make sure to keep flipping and rotating while you roll to prevent it from sticking to the surface and to help keep the slab even. Use guides during the end to keep the same thickness throughout the slab. These are two pieces of spare wood that are about one centimeter thick, which I find is a nice thickness to work with. Place the guides on either side of the slab and roll over them to keep the rolling pin at the same height throughout. If you see any air bubbles in the slab, prick them with a needle tool or something of the likes until you hear the bubble pop. Smooth the surface over again. Use a metal rib to compress the slab. Compressing is vital to make the clay stronger, help prevent cracking and warping, and to smooth the surface. To attach two slabs together to make one bigger slab, cut an edge from each slab at a 45 degree angle. Score the edges where they will attach, damp it with a wet sponge or paintbrush, and flip the edges so that they sit flush against each other. Press the joint together firmly while still keeping the shape and blend it together seamlessly. I roll over it to get it level before blending it together. I find scoring the seam with this serrated rib, smoothing it over with a smooth rib and running a damp sponge over it seems to work well at blending them together. Flip it over carefully and blend out the seam on the other side as well. The attachment needs to be strong in order to prevent cracking or further complications. I suggest trying to keep your piece as accurate as possible throughout the whole process. Because you're hand building it, it'll always have a handmade feel no matter how perfect you make it. In this example, I am making a cake stand. This method is also commonly used to make items such as plates, vases and larger bowls. Again, I will link a few videos where I've used this lab method to make different projects in the top corner and in the description box below. 
Slab building is essentially cutting shapes from slabs and assembling them together to create a three-dimensional piece. Whenever you attach two pieces together, you need to make sure that you're creating a strong joint. To do this, thoroughly score the surfaces that are being attached with either a needle tool or a serrated rib. This helps to create a vacuum effect when pushed together. Use a damp sponge to wet the surface, making it sticky and acting like a sort of glue. Firmly press the sides together without distorting the shape and blend out the seam. You can use a modeling tool or an ice cream stick to reach the internal seam. When attaching larger slab pieces together, wait for them to dry slightly so that they're not so floppy when you're trying to assemble. Add a coil to any 90 degree seam and blend it together to the surfaces to create a stronger and neater join. The next method is the coil method. Start by rolling out coils and set them aside under a piece of plastic to prevent them from drying out too much. Shape the first coil as the base and attach the two ends by blending them together. Add another coil layer by gently squeezing it onto the previous coil. To shape your pot outward, attach the coil slightly to the outside of the previous coil. Once the coil is on, blend it all together. To shape your pot straight up, add the coil directly on top of the previous coil. You can use your finger to blend or a tool such as a modeling tool, ice cream stick or a rib. To shape your pot inward, attach the quill slightly to the inside of the previous quill. Again, I like to put it on a movable surface such as a manual wheel or a piece of paper to help make it easier to navigate around your work. Use a metal rib or a damp sponge to help smooth the surface as you go. If you use a damp sponge, make sure that it's not too wet as this can weaken your clay making it more difficult to work with. The more inward or outward you place the next quill, the more extreme the shape or angle will be changed. Be mindful of the end shape that you have in mind. The more the form curves and the more weight is added, the more likely it is to collapse on those curves. The walls mustn't be too thin, otherwise it won't be strong enough to handle its own weight. And it mustn't be too thick, otherwise it will be too heavy to hold up its own weight. It's a fine balance between wall thickness and its overall shape. I'd suggest a thickness of about one centimeter and a shape that can naturally support itself. If you find that the base is starting to be flimsy under the new weight that's being added, Add a sheet of plastic just at the top of the pot and let it dry out slightly. This will allow the base to dry and strengthen slightly while you keep the top wet enough to be able to carry on building at a later stage. Here you can see me mixing two of the methods together. I'm using a slab as the base of this pot and attaching them together. Again, I will link a few videos where I use the quill method for different projects in the top corner and in the description box below. I hope this video has inspired you to make something. Like and subscribe to support my channel and thank you so much for watching.